Hey yo, I'm Miss Linnea Lark and I'm going to teach you how to make a wheel thrown pitcher with a cutaway spout. First things first, you got to throw your pitcher. After I center my clay, open up the base. Now what's really important to understand about this type of pitcher is that you'll be pulling and cutting the rim while it is still wet. That means that I'll be unable to trim it at the leather hard stage. Since this pot won't be trimmed, I am careful when opening up the base that I go down a little bit farther and deeper than I normally would. This will help keep the base thinner, lighter, and more ergonomic to use. Once I'm as deep as I'm gonna go, I open up and start pulling those walls up into a basic cylinder. Try to get even thin walls to keep your pitcher light and graceful. Nobody wants to be sweating when they're trying to pour liquids. Once you've got your walls thin, your base light, and as much height as you can, you'll need to create a shoulder by pushing outward from the inside. Your shoulder should be low enough that you leave space for the spout at the top. I used the top quarter of my pot for the spout, which left the bottom three quarters of the body for the pitcher, which will later hold the liquids. And then I do some compressing, sponging, and cleanup. And now it's time to pull the spout. You'll want to pull the spout right away while your pot is still super wet. I keep my non-dominant hand dry and use my thumb and pointer finger to make a U shape. And then I gently place those fingers against the pot's rim. I then dip my dominant finger in the water and gently pull the clay outward into a spout shape. As I pull, the spout gets more pronounced, but it also gets thinner. So every once in a while, I give the tip a little tap just to keep it from getting too thin and sharp. I'm careful to be very gentle as I clean up and check that my spout is symmetrical. Once I like my spout's placement, I pull the spout's throat. This time I hold my non-dominant hand at the top facing downward and pull with my wet pointer finger a little lower, creating a throat. The throat will allow liquid to pour a bit smoother. Now we gotta cut out that spout while my clay is still wet. To do this, I use a taut wire tool. I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit nerve wracking doing this the first time. But just remember that after you ruin about five pitchers, you'll probably be a pro. So you might as well jump right in. Here are some hard won nuggets of wisdom. Number one, look at your pitcher from multiple directions and visualize where your cut will go. Number two, when you cut, let the top of your shoulder define the bottom of your spout. Tip number three, make sure your cut is centered with the spout. Stand directly behind your spout and cut toward yourself. Number four, cut off less than you think you'll need to cut, just in case. You can always cut a bit more off, but once it's gone, well, you get the picture. Number five, no matter how stressed you're feeling, keep that wire tight. If you let the wire get loose, it'll cut in like a weird, rounded, not straight way. Tip number six, your cut should be quick, smooth, and intentional. Try to have confidence. Don't go too slow or else you'll get rugged, jagged edges. And last, number seven, you can always cut more and make fixes after it's set up a bit, which is what I decided to do. While I wait for my pitcher to set up, I pull my handle. For this pitcher, I know I want to have a long handle to balance out my large spout. So I pull a nice long thin handle and secure it to the table's edge to set up. If you'd like more tips on handle pulling, check out my other pitcher tutorial in the link above. Now that my pot's a wee bit more set up, I sit down to reshape my spout. I decided to trim some of the top corners away to make a more curved and harmonious round spout shape. I carefully make small cuts with an X-Acto blade and then clean it up with a sponge and rib. Before I add my handle, I take a minute to clean up my bottom. I use a serrated trimming tool and a hard rubber rib. Time to attach the handle. 
I hold my handle up to my picture to observe the angle that I need to cut my handle at to get the desired effect. And I decide to have my handle lift upward to hopefully balance out the spout. I attach the top and use a rubber tip tool to clean up the attachment, and then do the same thing at the bottom. I also use a lump of clay to support the handle from beneath. When placing the lump of clay, I'm careful not to smush the handle. It will stay there through the night and gently support the handle. The next day, once everything is set up and a little drier, I carefully carve my name into the base. And then I decided to slip trail this picture. Check out the link above for more slip trailing tips. I decided to slip trail an impromptu and unplanned design. I normally plan my designs ahead of time, but I was in need of a fast slip trail pot for a glazing tutorial I'm working on. In that tutorial, I'm going to show the difference between layering glazes on top of each other or pre-mixing those layers before applying them. It actually turned out pretty cool and I'm excited to work on that video in the near future. And when it's finished, I'll make sure to post it in this tutorial on a link at the top right corner. In the end, I enjoyed the spontaneous nature of this cactus blob design. And then the last step is to just soften up some of this slip trailing. Once my slip trailing has hardened up, I use a sponge to soften the design. Slip trailing often dries with a peak or a tip to the design, kind of like a mountain range has a peak to it. Once dried and fired and glazed, those ridges can feel sharp, so I always try to soften them a bit with a sponge when they are leather hard. And then there's the fist fired pitcher. I hope you guys learned or at least enjoyed this tutorial. If you have questions or advice to give us all, please comment below. And to all my students out there watching, I love you and I miss you and I can't wait to be in the studio with you again. Keep the hope alive and stay positive. Happy day.